So I'm gonna go back through. Holy shit, my power just went out. Oh my god. What the fuck? Oh! Hey guys, it's your girl Z Sprucey reporting live from the gutter. Just kidding, okay. I was just listening to Future, so. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can see from the title of today's video, I'm going to be doing a video all about brushes. I'm going to be talking about my favorite brushes and how I use them, what I use them for. And I was going to actually film my makeup tutorial for you guys today because I know I haven't done one of those in a while, but my favorite pair of lashes that I was going to use for this video ended up like falling apart the other day and I don't have a backup pair and I don't have any other good lashes that are going to work for this look. And on top of that, it's raining outside today. It's like hella cloudy and I do usually depend on natural lighting when I'm filming a makeup tutorial. I'll sit in front of the window and have my lights going just so like you guys can see everything really well. And there's not good natural lighting today due to the rain. So I was like, you know what, let me just save that for another day. And I decided to film my brushes video today because this has been something that I've been wanting to film for like over a year now, I just have never gotten around to it because I've had other videos that are always like taking priority over this one. But um, I think this is a really good video to do because I do talk a lot about brushes on my channel, but usually it's just kind of like quick, like, oh, I'm gonna use this pr brush for that. But today I'm gonna go in depth and talk about my all time favorite brushes, what I use them for, how I use them. And just to give you guys a quick warning, Yes, this video is going to be hella long. Most of my videos where I'm just sitting down talking to you guys about something are pretty lengthy and in-depth. That's just because like when I really feel some type of way about something, I like to be there very thorough. I like to go into detail and I just talk a lot about stuff that I'm passionate about. So if you don't like videos that are on the longer side, you probably should find another channel to watch because most of my videos are on the longer side because I do like to go in depth and I do have a tendency to repeat myself. A lot of y'all call me out for that. I'm working on it, okay? Um, but anyways, yeah, so this video is probably going to be long. I will leave timestamps in the description box. Um, but yeah, okay, let's go ahead and start the video because I think that is all I have to say. Um, so I'm going to be going in order of like how I do my makeup, kind of, because I usually start with my face, then do my eyes, and then finish my face, but I'm just going to start with all the face brushes, talk about all of those, and then move to the eye brushes and talk about all of those. So I have all my favorite brushes sitting right there in front of me, laid out, they look so pretty. Um, some of them are affordable, some of them are high-end. These are just like my favorites in general, ones that I can't live without, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm gonna be starting today with foundation, and my absolute all-time favorite thing to apply my foundation with, hands down, is a beauty blender. By the way guys, another quick disclaimer, all my shit is dirty right now. My brushes need to be washed. I use all these brushes to do my makeup today. Things are not clean, so don't judge me for that. Okay, anyways, but this is the Beauty Blender, and I do, this is a dry, by the way, so that's why it's a little tiny and it's dirty, like I said, but um, I do prefer the black one. I just think it's the softest, um, especially softer than the original pink one. But this is hands down my favorite thing to apply my foundation with. There are lots of dupes out there, some of which I do like. I talked about this in my Get Ready With Me video. This um, L'Oreal sponge, which is also dirty. Um, this is pretty similar to the Beauty Blender, but not. As you can see, this one has like a lot more bounce back to it. This is a little stiffer. And this is the Morphe sponge, which I've been trying out lately too. This one's currently wet because I actually used this one today. But this is a pretty good dupe too, and it's really similar to the L'Oreal sponge. So they're the same size when they're both wet. But in my opinion, nothing, absolutely nothing beats the Beauty Blender. It's just hands down the best thing to apply your foundation with. Just bounce it, bounce it, bounce it on. And amazing. You will look flawless, okay? Same thing for concealer under the eyes. My favorite thing to buff out my concealer with is a damp black beauty blender. These guys are more affordable, but like I said, nothing beats this guy right here. Another decent one is the Real Technique sponge, but again, just not quite the same. The expensive one also does last a lot longer than these. These I find tear. See, they're kind of ripped. They tear a lot easier than the Beauty Blender, which is why I think this one is worth the extra money because it's better and it will last longer as well. Okay, why does my hair look good on this side and this side looks like shit? Guys, there's a food truck coming to my neighborhood tonight. I don't know what kind of food it is, but food truck food is always good. I'm so hyped for it. Anyways, okay, so 
Other brushes that I do like to use for my foundation, I will use foundation brushes from time to time, especially with formulas that are a little bit more liquidy. I find that they sometimes work a little bit better applied with a brush first, but even then I always go back over it with a beauty blender. But I also really like to use brushes on clients just because using a beauty sponge on clients can get very expensive. So I try to use brushes for that when I can. And my favorite for brushes for that are these two right here. Okay, so this one's by Sigma and this is the, what is it? Flat Top Kabuki F80 brush, and it's perfect for just like buffing it into your skin, really pushing the product around, blending it out. Did y'all hear that dog barking outside? Anyways, it's perfect for buffing out your foundation. And the other one that I really like is similar, but it's a lot bigger. And this one is by Morphe, and this is the E54 brush. This one is super duper soft, super big, so it's good for a quick application. And these are my top two favorite brushes for foundation if I have to use a brush. Now, really quickly, I wanna to touch on Morphe brushes for just a second because I know there's like, everybody's hella opinionated on these things. I love the Elite brushes. They're so soft, they're super good quality, they're really nice, they're really sturdy, they blend amazingly. Um, but as for their other brushes, I'm not really a huge fan. They're natural hair, like the white hair bristle brushes, I really don't like at all. I think they're very scratchy, they lose their shape, you know, they're just not very good quality to me personally. The synthetic hair ones, I do have a couple of those that I enjoy that are okay. So white hair ones, that's a no-go for me. The blending brushes, like with the white hair, I think kind of suck. Um, to be quite honest, sorry, I'm not trying to hate on Morphe, but I just don't like their natural hair brushes. Their synthetic ones are pretty good, and their elite ones, I think, are amazing. So just wanted to throw that out there really quickly, since a lot of people want to know everybody's opinion on Morphe. That's mine personally. Okay, so this next brush that I want to talk about is another Morphe elite brush. This is the E8 brush, and I actually use this brush for a number of things. This is one of my favorite brushes ever, and... First thing that I use it a lot for is under eye concealer. So on days that I don't really feel like putting on any makeup but I wanna have something on my face, I usually do eyebrows and a little heart shape tape under my eyes and I just buff it out with this brush right here and I don't really set it, I just kinda of buff in a little bit to cover up my dark circles and then I walk out the door and this is perfect for that. I love it, it's so soft, it fits right there under the eyes perfectly. Another thing that I like to use this brush for is blending out my concealer underneath my brow. So after I fill in my brows these days, I usually line it with concealer underneath the brow and then I'll take this brush and I will just kind of drag it down onto my lid a little bit. Also, if I am doing my eye makeup first, I will prime my eyes with concealer and often buff out the eye concealer with this brush. So this great, this brush is just really great for buffing out any type of concealer. You can even use it to spot conceal, just kind of do, 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 dab it on the spot. And what else do you use this for? Oh yeah, you also use this to blend out my color corrector. So after I do my foundation, I put color corrector under my eyes and then just kind of buff it out with this brush and then add my concealer, buff out my concealer and then set it. So this is a really, really good multi-purpose multi multi brush from Morphe from the Elite Collection, which like I said, is really, really good and I really, really like it, so. Okay, so since I just talked about underlining my brow with concealer, let's talk about the two brushes that I like to use for that. The first one is an Eco Tools brush, and I don't know the name of it. It doesn't have a name on it. I think it might have come in a set. I don't know, guys. I've had this brush forever. Like, I'm telling you, before I was even into makeup, I owned this brush. I think my mom gave it to me in, like, a set or something for Christmas in my stocking. I don't know. But lately, I've been loving this brush to carve out my under eye concealer. It just goes perfectly right under there, amazing, and then, ooh, just burped. And then I just drag it down a little bit and then buff it out with the E8 brush. This is absolutely perfect for that. I'll see if I can find it online and try and link it below for you guys, the name of it. It's probably just called like a flat concealer brush or something like that, but it's by Eco Tools. Then the other one that I used to like for it, um, this is kind of my OG. I've kind of gravitated away from this one and more towards this one, but I used to use this one for this all the time. And this is called the Zoeva Brow Line Brush. And this is just, an amazing brush, okay? So not only is it great for carving out of the brows because it's nice and small and precise, but you can honestly use this brush for so many things, okay? So you can use it for that. Another thing that I like to use it for is like if you're cleaning up your lip line, because here, let's zoom in real quick. Okay, so see how it's like smaller on one side and kind of is angled and has a point at the tip? So the shape of that just makes it really good for precision work. So like you can just right here, take a little concealer, 
zhoop, clean up your lip line a little bit. Another thing I've used it for is actually my winged liner. It's pretty good for that. Not as good as some of the other ones I'm going to talk about, but it does work for that. Um, also for getting in there, detailing, like um, lining your lower lash line with shadow, if you're just pushing it really close to the lash line, this one works great for that. Another thing which I love to use it for is, you know those kind of eye looks where you're taking the shadow like along your lower lash line, instead of stopping right here, you kind of bring it like straight in. I don't know, I'll try to insert a picture of me wearing that kind of thing right here on the inner corner, lower lash line, so you guys know what I'm talking about. But this is great for that because you can just kind of start and just stamp it right in there. You can also use it to smoke out shadow on your upper lash line. It's just such a good brush that you can use for so many different things. So um, this is like a must have brush for me in my collection personally. I think it's amazing. Okay, so let's get back to face brushes. The next one I wanna talk about is the brush that I use to set under my eyes. And this brush is like the only brush that I will use for this. It's amazing. This is the e.l.f. Small Tapered Brush, and I love this brush so much for setting and powdering underneath my eyes because it just fits so perfectly, and it's the perfect amount of density to just pack on the powder but also blend it out at the same time. It's just, it's amazing. Okay, and e.l.f. has really good brushes for really low price. This one, unfortunately, they have changed the shape of it somewhat recently because when I've gone to buy a new one, because I keep like a bunch of these in my collection because I'm using it every day, they did change the shape of it. So as you can see, this one's kind of like more pointed at the tip and a little bit more dense. This is the newer version of it. It's a little bit more just like flat and a little rounder at the top. So let me zoom in so you guys can see the difference. So obviously one's also dirty and one's clean, but I think you can still see that they're a slightly different shape. So I do much prefer the old shape, unfortunately, but the new one is still pretty good, just not quite as good as the old one. Another brush that I have that's really similar to it is this Wayne Goss O2 brush. This brush has some pros and cons to me compared to this. So this one is a lot, a lot softer and obviously a lot higher quality. It looks really, really similar as you can see. Again, one's dirty, one's clean, but they look almost identical. This one is obviously way higher quality though because it's Wayne Goss, which is expensive and this is like $3, but it's a lot softer. Like this brush is, this is probably one of the softest brushes I've ever touched. However, I still just don't think it does as good of a job as setting my under eyes as the other one. I think this one's a little bit more fluffy, like the bristles are a little bit looser, whereas this one's a little bit more dense, which is, I think, why I like this one better, but this is a really good, more expensive option. So I would say, you know, you don't need this if you have this, but this is a really great brush, just to me, not as good. Another thing I like to use this brush for is when I add like my yellow powder under my eyes, I do it with this one also and then I take like the extra and add it to my other like highlight areas of my face and then I'll also go back underneath my contour with it just to sharpen it up. So I pretty much keep this brush next to me when I'm doing my whole makeup just to like touch up here, da -da 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 -da, highlight color with it, blah blah blah. Okay, so next let's talk about all over powder brushes. So. I like to use something different for loose powder than I like to use for pressed powder. The reason for that is because loose powder, obviously it's easier to pick up more product when you dip your brush into it. It's just gonna get more on the brush. So I like to use a little bit fluffier of a brush for that because I don't wanna pick up so much and it be so dense and then I put like a shit ton of loose powder on my face just because I don't like that. So for loose powder, I like to use the Real Techniques powder brush. It's huge, it's fluffy, it's soft, so you can just real quick give yourself a nice light dusting with loose powder. This is amazing for that. Now for pressed powder, I like to use something a lot more dense because I feel like it picks up more of that product and it's harder to pick up quite as much product with a pressed powder as it is with a loose powder, like I said. So I prefer to use a more dense brush for that so I get more product on my brush and on my face. And for that, my favorite one to use is unfortunately limited edition, but I will be giving you guys an alternative to it, but I just have to talk about this brush. This is from the Juvia's Place Times Makeup by Aloe Brush Set Collab. I don't know if this is all of them, but I have her brushes in this cup right here that I keep on my vanity because I love them so much. These are super, super nice, super soft. This brush is perfect for all over powder because it's a lot denser and you just put all over your face 
really, really good for that. Um, but I will, oh, it's in my purse. Okay, let me go grab the other brush that I like to use for loose powder. It's in my purse because that one is not sold out limited edition, so it's still available. I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the other brush that I also really like to use for pressed powder, and this is the Zoeva 106 powder brush. This came in a brush set that I have um, with a bunch of Zoeva brushes, which is also what the brow line brush is from, but I'm like 99% sure they can all be purchased individually. I just personally got them in a set, um, but this is really similar. It's just not quite as big as the other one. It's also pretty dense, so it's just perfect for packing pressed powder all over your face if that's something you like to do. I don't usually set my full face with powder, but when I do or when I wanna touch up with powder, I leave this in my purse because it's like small, short handled, Really perfect for that. It's, yeah, really good. This is the one I'd go to when I do. Next up is highlighter brushes. And actually, it's in this case, it is highlighter brush because there is only one brush that I ever, ever use for my highlight because it's just that amazing and nothing does it for me like this one. And this is the Real Techniques setting brush. So I think this one is technically made for setting under your eyes, but to me, it's just too small and skinny and not... Mm, mm. You know, it's just not enough for me for that. Um, but I absolutely love it for highlighting the cheekbones because it just goes perfectly right here. It applies just the right amount of product, but then blends it out so just perfectly. This will give you the most pop and highlight, I promise you. And then just also for your cupid's bone nose, it's like just the right size and just, mm, it just, yeah, just amazing, okay? This is the only one that I use for highlighter and I have tons of these. So if you don't have it, this is like one of my must haves, like you need this brush, okay? Do it, buy it now. So next up is bronzer. And I don't wanna talk way too much about brushes that I use for bronzer and contour just because I have a whole video on contouring and bronzing, which I will leave right up here. Which side is it? I don't know, up here somewhere. And I talk a lot about brushes that I like for that in that video. So I don't wanna to go too in depth about those, but I will just quickly go over some of them. And if I have any new ones, I'll talk about those too. Um, but I know I already talked about these two for a bronzer in my bronzer and contour video. This is the Real Techniques blush brush. And this is the Morphe M527 brush. I know I said I don't like Morphe white hair brushes, and I don't. And I said that in my bronzer and contour video too, that I just really like the shape and the fluffiness of it. But this vi this video, this brush is a little bit scratchier and more frayed than I like them to be. Um, a lot of people in that video did recommend like a good dupe for this brush that's better quality. I just, I just haven't bought any yet. Um, but this is a really good bronzer brush. It's just like they're, it's not the best quality bristles, if that makes sense, but it still works well, if you know what I mean. It's just nice and fluffy, gives you a precise enough, but not too precise application. Same thing with this guy. This one's better quality. This one's different shape, more tapered, but still really, really good. Talked about these already, so that's enough of that. This one I actually haven't talked about before. This is a Sonia Kashuk number one brush. Looks like this. It's really similar to the Real Techniques one, just a little bit bigger, a little bit more tapered at the tip, and a little bit softer. But again, just great for bronzing all over. Boom, done. Okay, contouring brushes. I also talked a lot about these in my contouring video, so I'm not gonna go too in depth except for one that I don't think. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. You guys will see what I'm talking about. Anyways, um, contouring I usually like to use for my forehead. This one is the Real Techniques Bold Metals 300 brush just because it fits. Can you guys see my tracks? I don't know. Anyways, it fits perfectly just like right up in there. Perfect for contouring your forehead. Not going to go too much into that one. Another one I love is the Real Techniques Contour Brush. Fits perfectly in your cheekbones just to give you a nice precision and then you can blend it out beautifully with this guy. And then um, I talked about this in my bronzing and contouring video that I like to use like a tapered angled brush like this to start my contour a lot of the time. And I did mention this for the affordable option, the e.l.f. angled blush brush. But the reason I want to go more in depth about it now is because like I mentioned before, they changed some of the e.l.f. brushes and this one they actually changed like in a good way. So this is the old one, this is the new one. As you can see, this old one is fatter and like stubbier, 
I guess, than the old one. And this one is longer and skinnier, the new version of it. So I actually love, love, love this one now. It's just perfect. It fits right there in your cheekbones to cut them. While this one's, I think, could be a little bit too fat and dense for it. This one does a way better job. Let me zoom in so you can see the difference. Okay, so these are the um, elf brushes here on the left. We have the old one in here, we have the new one on the right, so you can see the difference there. Okay, and then again, as I mentioned in my contouring video, I like to sometimes go in with a more precise, sharper brush if I want like a more chiseled contour, just to cut it a little bit more. Cut it. You need to cut it. Okay, anyways. Um, and for that, I like to use the Zoeva Luxe Face Paint Brush 109 or the NARS Eda brush. They just sharpen it up, boom, boom. Yeah, go watch my other video. I'm not going to talk about it anymore. Okay, so only a few more brushes left in the face category. The first one is the one that I like to use for cream bronzer. So I think I've used it only once on my channel, but I absolutely love my Chanel cream bronzer. This stuff is amazing. And this brush is a perfect match for it. This is the Zoeva 103 Defined Buffer Brush. This one also, by the way, is really good for foundation and concealer under the eyes. Just like really any cream products that you're putting on your face, this one's fantastic for it. So this one, like I just like to take and dip into here and then just kind of like buff it onto my forehead, onto my cheeks. Really, really beautiful brush for cream bronzer and since it is synthetic, it's not going to absorb all the product. It's gonna blend it out super duper nicely. Um, but the last two that I want to talk about in my face brushes are my blush brushes. And these two are both by e.l.f. This is the e.l.f. Complexion Brush and this is the e.l.f. This is actually called the Blush Brush. So as you can see, they're a lot different. So which one I use just depends on what I'm going for. This one's a lot bigger and fluffier. So if I just want like an overall color to my cheeks, I'll use this one. If I want a little bit more of a precise application on the apples of my cheeks, I will use this one right here. Both really affordable, really great brushes. Alrighty, let's get into the eye brushes, and for that I have all of these right here. I know it's a lot, but like, you gotta have a lot of blending brushes. Sorry, that's just the way it is. But the first thing that I always do in my eye makeup, oh wait, okay, this one kind of goes in the category of before, I just left it out, but um, this is the 142 Concealer Buffer Brush by Zoeva. This is another one that I'll use for like blending out the concealer under my brow or applying like concealer under the eyes or onto the lid. Should have mentioned that along with the E8 brush by Morphe, but I kind of forgot because it was sitting with my eye brushes, but that's that real quick. Okay, so then the first thing I do when I'm doing my eye makeup is I always lay down a base shade. So that's just like a neutral color that's a few shades lighter than my skin tone that I pack all over the lid just to help the blending process it be a little bit easier later on. And for that, I always, 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 every single time, use this little EcoTools brush right here. This, again, one that I've had forever, one that my mom gave me in my stocking before I was like even into makeup and it came in a set but I will try and find it again and link it below, but it's just so good. I just like quickly pack the shadow all over my lid, blend it, blend it, blend it, just to set everything down and make a really good base, and this is the best brush for that. So next I'm gonna talk about my favorite blending brushes, and typically when I do a makeup look, I use like three to four, at least just blending brushes when I'm doing a look, and the first one that I use is the brush that I use to set down my transition shade. And for that, I like to use a nice, big, fluffy, round brush like one of these. This is the Morphe M504, and this is the NYX, I think it's called the number 10, oh no, number 16 blending brush. So these are really good for just laying down your transition shade in your crease, buffing them out, or going back in later and blending out your crease work just to make sure everything is really buffed out and seamless. So. These are my top two for that. So then after I lay down my lighter transition shades, I like to deepen up my transition and start to build up my crease using this brush right here. This is the 228 Luxe Crease Brush by Zoeva. Zoeva makes hands down my favorite blending brushes that I've ever tried. I know a lot of people rave about Smith Cosmonex brushes for blending. I feel like I need to try those because I feel like I'm gonna love them even more. But as of right now, the Zoeva brushes amazing for blending out your eyeshadow. So this eye stick just perfectly goes right in the crease. Let me just like move a little closer for this. So this one I like to just, oops, making a mess over here. Anyways, this one is just perfect because it sticks right in the crease and is nice and just fluffy, but kind of comes to a pointed tip. So it gives you kind of a little bit of precision without being like too harsh in one spot. 
So after I use my fluffier blending brushes, I'll deepen up the crease and transition a little bit more with this one. Blends out really, really beautifully. Okay, so the next one I like to use, and this is the one I start to use for deepening up the crease even more. So I start with my transition shade, fluffy blending brush, a little bit more of a precise one to deepen it up even more. And then when I really want to start building and adding definition for the crease is when I go in with my Zoeva 227 Luxe Soft Definer. There are a lot of brushes like this. MAC 220, 2, 215, MAC 214, I don't know, 217, that's it, MAC 217, which I don't have, but I know is shaped exactly like this, there's a Morphe one like it, I don't like that, because it's white hair, I think it's really scratchy, and doesn't hold its shape, and there's another one that's similar to it that I have in my lap right now that I'm also going to talk about, but this is hands down my favorite brush ever that's shaped like this, as you can see, it's nice and thin, and dense enough, and precise enough to get in your crease, but at the same time, it's still really fluffy, so it does, hello focus on me please, thanks so much, it does a really good job of blending into the other shades. So this one, beautiful for starting to just like boom, boom, boom in your crease and then if you can do a little on the outer corner, start to create that V shape, boom, love it. All right, so this one right here is really similar to that. This is the Sigma E25 brush. I used to use this one basically in place of my Zoeva one until I got my Zoeva one and that just changed my life. But I still do use this one sometimes in combination with that other one just because this one is a lot denser than the Zoeva one. So this one, if I want to start to pack on like a darker color in my outer V and in my crease, like a really deep shade, like a dark brown or a dark purple or a black or something like that, then I will go in with this brush just because it gives me a little bit more of a precise application and it won't get blown out as much as it will with that other brush because that one is like softer and fluffier and this one's a little bit denser. So I pretty much do the exact same thing with this one just for darker shades when I want to get more defined, more cut, more... Yeah, whatever. Okay, let's see what's next. Um, oh, okay, let's talk about my lid brushes. The brushes that I will use on my eyelids. So, this... Okay, sorry guys, my camera died in the middle of filming. Um, so I went and got food from the food truck. It was cheesesteak. And it was kind of disappointing. I mean, it was like sort of dry. And there was like barely any cheese on it. I don't know. It was lame, but whatever. Anyways, so if I have food in my teeth, sorry about it. That's why, because I just ate. Um, but I think I was talking about the MAC 242 brush, right? Yeah. So the 242 is literally the only brush that I will use for packing like shimmer shades or pigments onto my eyes. There is nothing else that does it for me like this one does. It's just so good. I don't even know what it is about it because there's so many other brushes that are like flat synthetic brushes that look like this. So you think like, okay, I can find something else that does the same thing. No, you can't. I have searched high and low. I have tons of brushes. This is literally the only one that does it for me. Oh, my water bottle's in the background. Sorry. Anyways, this is just the only one that does it for me. It's amazing. Really, really good. So if you don't have this, you need it. Okay? Okay, um, so I like that one for shimmer shades, but to pack matte shades all over the eye, like if I'm doing a black smoky eye or just any type of like eye look where I want like a matte shade all over the lid, this is the one that I'll use for that. So this one is natural hair. It's a little bit fluffier, it's a little bit shorter, a little bit softer, and this does a much better job of packing matte shades on the lid. And this is the Zoeva 234 Luxe Smoky Shader Brush. Okay, let's see, which one do I wanna talk about next? Uh, let's talk about my eyeliner brushes. Again, not gonna go too in depth on these because I have a whole video on how I do my winged liner, which it's kind of old and not very good. But uh, yeah, you get the point. Um, these are the brushes that I talked about in that video. Real Techniques 202 brush and Sigma E65. This one is hands down my favorite. I think I said that this was my favorite, but I changed my mind since then. The Sigma one's my favorite, and this is my second favorite. Just both small little angled brushes. Really, really great for putting on your winged liner. Okay, only a couple left. Uh, I don't know why I have this one here because it's not a favorite. Okay, so for my lower lash line, I really like to smoke it out using a pencil brush and I have a couple of different ones that I want to talk about. Uh, I'm getting confused. Okay, so I usually like to use a bigger one um, for underneath the eyes, like to put like the lighter shades, smoke it out, blend it out here. I'm like disoriented now that I've like just ate. I feel like I just want to take a nap and my phone's ringing and dogs are barking and the fucking kids upstairs won't shut the fuck up. But anyways, so I like to use a pencil brush for buffing out shadow on my lower lash line. 
And so I like to use a little bit of a bigger pencil brush. This one's by Morphe. It's the R41. Um, I meant to grab my Zoeva one, which looks exactly like this one, but it's by Zoeva, so this is that but just know that i mean it looks like this but this isn't the exact one because i don't know where the other one is but it's the same deal it's just like a round kind of pointy but not as tapered as like some pencil brushes and it's just fluffy and soft and you just buff it out under your eye and then uh, if i want to like go in with a little bit of a darker shade and add it underneath then i'll use something that has a little bit more of a point so i'll show you the difference between the two here you can see the one on the left is a little bit more precise and small and comes to more of a point where the one on the right is rounder and fluffier so i'll use this one for blending out or applying my lighter shades and this one for a little bit more precise work underneath the eye and then <clears throat> if i want to go in and like add something even closer to the lower lash line um, but still kind of smudge it out. Then I will use this Zoeva 226 smudger brush, which looks like this right here. And this one's just obviously way more precise and skinny, but still fluffy enough to where you can smoke it out a little bit. Okay, so I'm on my last two brushes. Um, <clears throat> gosh, sorry. This is the Sigma E55 eye shading brush. I like to use this one, so like I just mentioned, I usually use a pencil brush to smoke out my lower lash line, but lately I've been using this one just because one day my pencil brushes were dirty and I needed to use something, so I used this guy right here, and this one also worked out really, really, oh god, really, really well for smoking out the lower lash line. Um, but I also do like to use this one sometimes for packing matte shades on the lid as well. So the last brush that I'm going to talk about is another one from the Juvia's Place Makeup by Aloe collection. So sorry about it, but there's really just nothing that beats this for this particular thing in my eyes. But I'm going to show you guys like the shape and how it looks and everything up close. So if you can find something similar to that, then great. So this is, it doesn't have a name, but this is the brush right here. And I like to use this one for inner corner and brow bone highlight because it's it's kind of like the mac 242 but it's smaller so it just goes right in there and just fits perfectly under the brow to add that shimmer shade here and here to highlight the brow bone sometimes i'll also even like take the extra whatever i did with that put a little on my nose and cupid's bow to make the highlight there even more popping so yeah so that is the last brush um i realized i forgot to do close-ups of some of the brushes so i'm going to go back through and do a close-up of all of them and insert clips of that so you guys can see what they all look like up close but yeah i think that just about completes this video i hope that it wasn't too long but like i said in the intro a bitch likes to talk a lot so if you don't like it then that's too bad for you find another youtuber to watch but anyways thank you guys for so much for watching my video all about brushes i hope you liked it and i hope it helped I will leave all the brushes in the description box for you guys as I always do just in case you missed anything or got confused or I was rambling or whatever. As always, I will also link all my social media down there. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. All of that is Z underscore Sprucey. I will also put in the description box where you can find my makeup page on Facebook, where you can contact me via email for business stuff, whatever. Just always look in the description box because there's always a lot of good shit down there. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment and tell me what your favorite brushes are if I didn't talk about them. Let me know what brushes I need to try that I need in my life and what you use them for. I would love to hear it and I'm obsessed with brushes. You don't guys don't understand how many I have. So I would love to hear your suggestions. So yeah, please leave me a comment down below. And that is it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.